Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm very excited because my awesome patron, Tricky Troy, has sent me something that was delayed because of COVID and things, but now it's finally here. So let's dive into this unboxing. Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Hi, Bill. I wanted to be the first to get you this from Tricky Troy. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Popping noises everywhere. Dun da da da. Mythic. 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 Odyssey. Odyssey. Theros. 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 Well, the Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Um, I don't have really any background with this book. So as I delve into it, um, I'll just kind of share my impressions. First of all, I do kind of like the vibe, the overall thematic kind of vibes. Um, and one of the reasons is because when I was a little kid playing D&D, there weren't a lot of like cinematic influences but in 1981, Clash of the Titans came out, and um, that was like, like in my childhood, um, not a movie that you know was kind of common, I guess, for the time, or at least not that I recall. Um, Conan the Barbarian would come out like a year later, maybe, or two years, but that was like R-rated, so I didn't see it until many years later. But Clash of the Titans was definitely a big influence on us kids because we were D&D &D nerds and it was basically like this awesome like campaign come to life, complete with, you know, epic Ray, Ray Harryhausen uh, claymation techniques. So um, I kind of dig the idea of this book. I don't really know a lot about Theros as a place, but when you open it up, it definitely has kind of like a an homage to the Greek myth stuff, which um, that's another thing, you know, after Clash of the Titans, um, Greek mythology became like a fascinating subject and many of our D&D campaigns had to do with adventures that were very much in that orientation. Um, so they kind of go into the intro stuff here that gives you a little bit of background. Then they have character creation. And again, really cool illustrations. Like I like all this art. It's very clean, looks very nice. Um, they talk about supernatural gifts, anvil wrought, heroic destiny, um, inscrutable lifelong companion, oracle. I like oracle. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna like it in this, but uh, I definitely liked it in Pathfinder. Looks like they have some components in here to befit that oracle thing. Pious, unscarred. Then they have races, um, humans, centaurs, leonin, uh, minotaurs, and satyrs and tritons. So kind of, again, hearkening back to a lot of that classical Greek mythology. Um, human names, centaur, um, strength increases by two, wisdom increases by one. Um, centaurs are considered medium. Um, they are fey instead of humanoid. They can do charges, they have hooves, equine build, survivor, and languages. Cool. Leonin, the Leonin guard, the shining lands of Oreskos. Um, so those are like lion type people. Cool. Um, now I'm not really sure if you were to compare those to the Tabahi, but I'm just looking at this, it looks like they emphasize constitution and strength. So the, the robust kind of lion build factors in here, uh, if you make these as characters, um, versus the Tabahi who tend to be like sleek and fast and sneaky, but um, still very cool. So, you know, if you're into these kind of mythological races, now here's your opportunity to, to truly integrate them if you haven't already. Uh, Minotaurs gives them um, some background information. Again, kind of cool illustrations. Minotaurs get a plus two to strength and a plus one to con. And they have a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, satyrs, which I really like, those are cool. 
Um, and again, you know, if you're one of those people who likes running campaigns that have a lot of fey or fey wild elements to them, um, this is a great supplement or even, you know, vice versa. The fey wild stuff can be a supplement to this. Um, Satyr traits, charisma by two, dexterity by one. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then tritons. The tritons under the sea. Strength, con, and charisma each go up by one. They are amphibious. Okay, so that's kind of that stuff. Then they have a bunch of subclass options if you're into that kind of jam. The Bard College of Eloquence, the Paladin Oath of Glory. Maybe those are cool. Um, some backgrounds that are, I guess, specific to this. Athlete, just athlete, is that the only one? Uh, it looks like it is. You strive to perfect yourself physically in an execution of everything you do. Um, yeah, so kind of like, you know, again, hearkening back to that, the, the Greek historic ideals with, you know, the, the physical form and like the Olympics, the, you know, the competitive spirit, that kind of stuff. Okay, then it goes into this weighty chapter of Gods of Theros, which is all really cool, I guess, new stuff. Or if you know about Theros, this expands on that maybe. I don't have a Magic the Gathering background, so I don't really know about Theros or like Ravnica, so I'm not going to judge, but um, seems like it's pretty cool. They've got a whole list of gods of Theros with alignments and suggested cleric domains and common symbols and myths and deeds and worships. And then they get into piety, which I, this is something that I'd heard of and I was kind of excited about. And the, the basic gist is that um, the actual piety of the worshipers um, has a specific mechanical function in the game, in this setting. So in other words, like a god is actually empowered by the worshipers and their piety, or the number of worshipers and their piety. Um, so benefits of piety. The gods bestow favors on those who prove their devotion, so and vice versa, right? When your piety score crosses certain thresholds, 3, 10, 25, and 50, you gain a benefit detailed in the sections describing the gods' champions throughout this chapter. If your piety score exceeds and then falls below one of those thresholds, you lose the benefit you gained at the higher tier. If you choose the Oracle Supernatural Gift, you gain different rewards for your piety score instead of the ones normally granted by your god. This gift and its benefits are described in chapter one. Uh, to some extent, piety is its own reward. Behaving in accordance with your god's dictates and ideals inspires you and might enable you to succeed where you might otherwise fail. At your DM's discretion, whenever you increase your piety score, you might also gain inspiration, reflecting the improvement in the harmony between you and your god. Then there's impiety, because we all make mistakes. Um, changing gods, blah, blah, blah. And then we go into these gods. So we have Athreos. Um, some cool stuff there. Ephara, Ephara. Again, I don't know any of these guys. Erebos, um, Heliod, God of the Sun. So that's kind of like Helios. I guess there's they're drawing from um, some of the Greek stuff there. Iros, Karametra, Keranos, God of Storms. Yada yada yada. Keep going. So. I mean, basically, this is like your deities and demigods, right? This is, this is like an expanded version of that specific to the pantheon of this setting. Um, which, you know, if you're a new DM and you don't really know how to integrate divine things in an important and significant way in your gaming world, this might be an excellent um, point of, of resource for you to look at how to do that effectively and to give you some suggestions and mechanics for how to integrate that in. Uh, for me personally, it's nothing new because I decided 22 years ago um, that a significant portion of my original world was going to be very divine and not arcane. So the gods are actually very present, very active, and I even homebrewed my own mechanic um, so that your, your faith, I call it, true faith like in in the sense of anybody could do it it's not just for divine spellcasters but your faith or in this 
circumstance piety would be have an impact on your connection to your God um, and the gods being more involved in the mortal world. But this is great. I mean, so far, so good, really. Uh, realms of gods and mortals. The mortal realm. Dee, 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 there's a map. Cool. Um, calendar. You know, so this looks like some setting information. Um, Akros. Um, Melitis. Setessa. So some cities, some locations, maybe some kingdoms. Oreskos. Phoboros and Scophos, Realms of the Returned, the Siren Sea, Skola Vale, Realms of the Gods, the Katachthan Mountains, the Oraniad Mountains. So this is all setting stuff. And again, if you're like a newer DM or even an experienced DM and you're just like, I'm sick of the Forgotten Realms or whatever, you could run some stuff here. Um, creating Theros Adventures. Nice. Uh, chapter 4. So here they talk about kind of how to base God-based adventures. So um, they talk about how to create uh, divine coalitions, friendly cooperation, together by circumstance. Then they have like quests, um, divine assistance, villains and monsters, communication, um, and then a bunch of different charts for omens, which I think are really cool. Omens, you know, are important in mythology but it can also add a lot of flavor to your game and even create some like plot points and little story hooks, adventure hooks. Um, divine intervention, divine ordeals. Um, and then here they have even some adventures. Maps plotted out here. Um, cool. Temples, dungeons, uh, you know, graveyard, temple. So it kind of looks like they have like a little mini adventure set up for each one of these major uh, divinities within their pantheons, complete with um, quests and maps and suggestions for villains and all that fun stuff. I'm just going to skip ahead because I don't want to like spoiler that for anybody. But if you're a DM, it looks like this has a lot of good content for you. Um, then it looks like Nautical Adventures. It's kind of its own little piggybacked thing here after all those god quests, um, sailing the seas, which, you know, again, harkens back to, like, the Odyssey, you know, island hopping, going on these adventures, mystical islands, underwater adventures, yay, cool. Um, and again, I, I really dig the art. Um, it's, it's really cool, really cool. Denizens of the Underworld. Then we go into treasures, not going to ruin that for anyone. Then we go into friends and foes, friends and foes, Nyxborn creatures, classic monsters, uh, and then a bestiary. They have aberrations, celestials, constructs, fiends, fays, giants, humanoids, monstrosities, and undead. And again, not to spoil that for anybody. Oh, this is a cool chimera thing, the Theron chimera which apparently is maybe different from a Forgotten Realms Chimera. Um, really cool, really cool art. I'm just digging it. I got to go back on that. That's, that's cool. Um, Colossus of Akros, challenge rating 23, good Lord. Demons of Theros, Nightmare Shepherd, Eater of Hope. Um, yeah, so a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of cool stuff. Wow, who is that dude? Hundred-handed one. That's crazy. Huge giant. Um, harpies. So I think they got everything kind of covered here. That's cool. Hydras. Um, and then some of the looks like kind of more elemental creatures. Or, I mean, I guess they're fey, but like naiads live in water. Oreads uh, embody the might of flames and volcanism. Um, so they've got a bunch of cool stuff there. The Returned, which I guess are the undead folk. Um, satyrs, Tritons. And this is more for like encountering these things, right? Tromocratis, Tromocratis. 
Challenge rating 26, Gargantuan Monstrosity Titan. Eek. I would not want to encounter him. So overall, um, really cool looking book. And it looks like maybe a great thing, again, for, um, for newer DMs who are looking at a, a kind of a different world setting. Or maybe you're a Magic the Gathering fan who's kind of segued into D&D &D and now you're excited because here's Theros because you know about that from cards. Or maybe you're an experienced DM and you're just sick of whatever setting you've been running and you want to try something new. Or maybe you're nostalgic because in the early 80s you were some kid like me who saw Clash of the Titans and thought it was the ultimate representation of of your D and D adventures on the big screen, and now you want to delve back in and create your own mythic quests. So, whatever your motivation, uh, I think it looks really cool. So, check it out if you want to, and if you don't, then don't. Um, but anyway, if you have run anything or you're familiar with this setting and you want to share it, please share it in the comments below. And as always, thank you to all my subscribers and supporters for your, your continued support. It means a lot. Take care and have a good one.